Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. We are here on this Tuesday to talk a little basketball. I've been giving you a lot of football lately. And for basketball at the time being, no no roster news, nothing like that to uh, keep you updated on. Just know that K-State is still trying to fill out two more roster spots. But what we are here to discuss is a little interesting nugget that John Rothstein put out last night. And he is uh, basically the first one to confirm that the Big 12 will be moving to 20 conference games in 2024-25, and there will be no bye weeks when the season starts around New Year's Eve. He said the 30th or 31st is when conference games will start. Those will be weekdays. Uh, a, a lot of things to kind of get into here. So obviously, we've been accustomed to the Big 12 for over a decade now, playing 18 games. It used to be you played everybody at home and everybody on the road. Then last year, a little bit of an adjustment. But the interesting thing about last year was the amount of time it took to play the conference slate. It wasn't all that different. Just with the way the calendar worked out, you got a bye game, a bye week baked in. So every team had at least one week where they did not play in on a weekday, which seemed beneficial for some. I mean, you think about K State, theirs came after their road trip to BYU. Uh, that was kind of a wild week for them they had the big game with KU at home and then they had to go on the road for their longest road trip of the year to BYU they got that week after to wait up and build up for a Saturday game in your eyes Drew uh, I guess the first place to start is what do you think of moving to a 20 game structure considering the fact that you're going to have uh 16 teams in the league so you know no matter what you did uh 18 games 20 games you were going to have some double uh, opponents, you were going to play a home and a home with some, but not everybody, and certainly a pretty small amount, no matter what. So, in your eyes, do you like twenty games, or do you would you have preferred to stay at eighteen? I think that from a competitive balance standpoint, just twenty games makes more sense than eighteen would have. I just think that with the amount of teams that you have, you know that there's going to be some complaining about why do we play like in Allen Fieldhouse, but then you don't get a home a return trip because I think that that's the one that I think a lot of people would be upset about if they saw that KU was just a road game only. Uh, but I, I think that it makes a lot of sense. And I, I was kind of hoping that 20 because you ideally, from a K-State perspective, you want to play the older traditional Big 12 schools twice and kind of get into that because it's more of a rivalry when it's that way, when it's more regional and you play the regional teams twice. Uh, but I can imagine that 20 games is probably not a very popular one with the Big 12 coaches, but it's something, it wasn't very popular when the Big 10 did it either, but it's something that I think everybody's going to have to get used to. And I think what the unintended consequence of adding 20 conference games now is that you're probably going to see a weaker non-conference slate for a lot of power conference teams. And and I don't really love that, but like I also know where they're coming from. Yeah, it, I mean, that's, that's an interesting element of this, and I understand why they will end up doing it. And you think about uh, what we kind of know K-State already has on the schedule for the upcoming season. You, you wonder how much more additions will they need to actually do for uh, high high – excitement and high major games you you don't want to dip your toes into that water too much which is why also like you know the big 10 the way they do it yeah you play some earlier conference games you're gonna you're gonna play all these games you're gonna play a handful of them early december you're gonna mm -hmm. get some of these out of the way i i i like the consistency of just having a hey this is conference play it's it started there's not going to be anything weird that goes on but i also just think that Playing 20 straight games with no buys, like I think it would have been a better idea. Don't don't squeeze them in at the start of December and play, you know, uh, two or three games and then come back to it after you finish off non-com play with like two more games. S just start a little bit earlier and bake in at least one midweek buy for every team because playing 20 games nonstop in the Big 12, which is – consistently been the toughest basketball league and is now going to get even better it just seems like a lot to ask and it's going to be it's going to be hectic it's going to get rough and tough for a lot of these teams and that's why probably depth is going to win out a lot in the big 12 and, yes. and who can kind of keep things uh, rolling in a healthy direction now the time of year when it starts the the games will kick off 
the 30th or 31st is what the report from Rothstein is. The other thing you're competing with there is on that fr- on that uh, on that Tuesday night. So you could be playing New Year's Eve. There is one of the quarterfinal games that will be played for the college football playoff this year. And I think any time now that you start mixing in and playing basketball games around serious football dates, I think you aren't giving enough weight and you aren't taking football seriously enough with the way things construct because you have a handful of teams that theoretically think they might be or should be playing on New Year's Eve this year in one of those quarterfinal games. I, I just think you have to to bake in there and say, okay, we're, we're going to wait. We can push this off a little bit because, uh, I mean, K-State, Arizona, both teams that you would think would be in that mix, Utah, uh, Kansas, whoever else you want to throw, Oklahoma State, um, they probably won't care about losing a basketball game. I don't think that matters to them very much. But that's one of those other things, too, where you're starting this up right in the thick of college football. And, and this is probably a bigger point at large with college basketball. And when do people actually start caring about it? But this is one of those things, too, where I just I think you want to do your best to avoid mixing basketball and the college football playoff and like significant bowl games. And it seems like Brett Yormark and the Big 12 are, are just not going to pay much attention to that, which is probably one of Yormark's biggest blind spots is he's done a lot of good for the conference, but I don't know how much he actually cares about the football side because he's a basketball guy at heart, and he's made that very clear since he came to the Big 12. The, the thing for me, and this, this might be like the old man yells at cloud thing, but I like when the conference all starts on the same day so if you can make it on a Saturday, yep. it's just more fun to me than having everything spread out. Like I hate how the Big East Big 12 battle, the the format of it is because you have games on like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'd much rather have if you if you really want to make this like the official start date of the conference, even if it's during the week, have all of the teams play on one day because it just makes it. I know that there isn't a ton of excitement for basketball at that time for a lot of schools, but it would make it, it would just be like the sign, like it would signify that basketball is like here and like, it's here to stay. Like it's basketball season. Now big 12, all, all 16 teams playing on one day. Like, I don't, I just feel like that would be so easy from a league office perspective to be able to make that happen. But maybe, maybe I'm overestimating how hard that actually is. Yeah. I, it feels like if you really wanted to work around that, you definitely could. And I, I just think that they're going head on. And I I get why it has to happen this way. If you want to make it work out the way you're trying to make it work out with all these teams in the league, you do kind of have to do it this way. But it, it would be avoidable. You would just probably run into other problems. So you have to take stock in what you value as a problem over something else. So we'll see. But is, is Do you think 20 games, with the way that K-State is setting up to play, with the way that the roster is right now, do you think 20 games nonstop, no break in there from the end of December to mid-March is going to be a problem for K-State in this coming season, or could they use it as a benefit to them where other teams might falter? I think that they could use it to their advantage a little bit. I, I think that they have more depth this year, uh, even with two roster spots open, because I, I anticipate – at least one being a major, major contributor for this, this upcoming year. And then, uh, but I just think that they have more guys that can come in and play here and there. And a lot of guys that have good roles defined already or what seems to be a good defined role. So I, I just think that they're probably in a better spot now this year than they would have been last year if it would have gone to 20 games. Now I, you know, I think about it from this perspective, K State's got a lot of guards and a lot of guys that I think can make plays for them to where you feel like that's beneficial in the depth department. But then you look at the bigs, which we know K State's already been struggling with. Like it was major that they got a chore a chore, but uh, you you really just have him and David Gasson right now that you're going to lean on. You hope to add another one in that mix, but that's where things might suffer, especially since you know David Gasson. Depending on how much you're going to rely on him this year. And maybe it's more than what you did last year. And he's a guy that he he's gotten banged up his first two years at K-State. It's not been, you know, this this clean ride for health for David Gasson. So that might give me some concern. But ultimately, I'm not uh, I think K-State might be built better for it than some others because of what they could do 
uh, when you give them the the look of all the guards they have. Yeah, I would agree with that. There's just more guards that can play this year. And I think that because of that, you're probably feeling a little bit better because I'm more worried about like guards wearing down and their shots becoming a little bit shorter or their legs just getting heavy than bigs getting in like foul trouble or wearing down because I just think that guards are so they're like the lifeblood of college basketball at the, at this stage. Yeah, we'll see how it ends up working out for K-State. Okay, so the way that this is going to go down next year, scheduling-wise in the Big 12, you're going to play 20 games. You will face 15 different teams, the 15 others that are in play here. And of those teams, you will face five of them, both at home and on the road. So that leaves 10 teams that you're only going to play either at home or on the road. Uh, so you'll you'll divvy them up whichever way you want to. We know that K State and KU they will that will be one of those five matchups that gets played twice throughout the regular season. In your in your mind, Drew, like you're getting to have say in this. Not necessarily what you think will happen, but if I asked you to give me the four other matchups that you want to see K State play twice this coming season, what would they be? Uh, I think that the first one is probably an obvious one in Iowa State. I just think that the rivalry and especially with how kind of chesty Iowa State has gotten over this last probably four or five months, that it would just be more fun to play them uh, twice. Uh, The other one I think is kind of obvious is uh, Baylor, just with the Scott Drew Jerome Tang connection, just more fun that way. Uh, another one, kind of a, not really a curveball, but I'll add in a new school. You know, we talked about this before we started recording. I want Arizona to be one of them. I, I, I just think it would be fun to play at Arizona. Having a home game with Arizona would also be super fun. I, I, I don't want to say that I'm not super sold on Arizona as a basketball program, but the last few years in March, um, have given me a little bit of a pause on Arizona as a basketball program. And then for my last one. The, the, the last one I think is the toughest uh, because there's not like a super obvious one. But I, I think if you look in from a potentially like the easiest remaining team, I, I think that I would consider Oklahoma State just with a new coach and a new program kind of getting off the ground a little bit. I think that that would probably be the best one. And K-State's had a lot of success against Oklahoma State recently. So I think that that, that, that plays in a part of why I'd want uh, them to play K-State or, or K-State to play Oklahoma State twice. But I think that that's my five with KU. I, I, I really can't disagree with that uh, in any way because Iowa State was number one on my list. I think – I think that's one that, you know, basketball wise, no doubt, should they should play twice every single year. You it yes. is probably the most hotly contested fan to fan rivalry in your league right now. Uh may, maybe Arizona, Arizona State's like that, but I, I don't know. Arizona State I don't think Arizona State people care enough. Yeah, they're kind of children of the poor right now. Like I don't know that they they care enough about it. Like I know one Sun Devil that really cares, but I don't know many outside of that. Uh, and so I think that would be one of them, no doubt. And I, I think you want the opportunity for that game to just build up and have it. Like, honestly, the way it worked out this year was pretty perfect where you had one kind of early in the season, some drama came out of that. And so the entire rest of the season, like, you know, that is a massive game at the end of the year between those two sides. Cause K-State had to back their crap up in that game and they did mm-hmm. by winning it. That was big of them. And Iowa State, on the other hand, they want that opportunity to be like, okay, we've we've been giving it to you for two months now. Now we gotta we gotta back it up. So I think Iowa State is on there. I had Oklahoma State immediately number two on my list. It serves two purposes to have K State play Oklahoma State twice. Um, number one, they suck. So that's that's a big aspect of that uh, because I think in the Big Twelve you want to get as. It, you know, it's not an easy league, so get the easy ones when you can. And I understand K State didn't get it last year, but historically, when they've just had you know an at least all right team, they've been able to get Oklahoma State on the road. So I think that's a good one, and I do like guaranteeing that opportunity to have a road game. That's a pretty easy trip for people because um, I think last year, the last two years, the the K State crowd in Stillwater has been really, really strong, and you know 
that outside of KU now is the closest trip for, I think, everybody that's a K-State fan, essentially, uh, when you're talking about the league, except for some of you out in Western Kansas. Maybe you can get to Boulder quicker than Stillwater. But I think that's one that I would throw in there um, because I just – like, that's that's one – that's a trip that I foresee myself – for however long, even if you know, even if I wasn't doing this job, going to Stillwater for that game. So I like Oklahoma State because they're bad and because it's an easy trip for a road game as well. Okay, so then my next two, Arizona or Houston. I don't have a, really a big preference on either. For this coming year, I guess it would be Arizona just because they're unknown. You haven't seen them yet. And my assumption would be is if the Big 12 tries to be smart about this and do some teams some solids, K-State will get a home game with Houston next year and not have to go back down there since they did this past season. But I say Arizona or Houston because of this. Yes, you would have to play them a second time, but think about how many games last year K-State would have benefited from from also getting to play that game at home versus only playing them on the road. Houston was one of those teams. Texas was another one where if you go and look at K-State's schedule last year, a lot of the away game only type of games K-State would have benefited if you could have swapped those out for home games. Like, if you'd only played West Virginia on the road, you're fine with that, and then you get, you know, Cincinnati or whoever Mm -hmm. back for that second game. You get that second crack with the advantage of the crowd behind you. I think that's important, especially when you have some towering teams like this. So take Arizona or Houston. I think you want to guarantee to play some of those big dogs in the league multiple times throughout the season so you have a chance for marquee wins, you get them at home. So I'll take either of those. My fourth pick, I'm with you. The Baylor one is there. I think that's one you almost have to, and we saw last year K-State and Baylor only played once in Manhattan, but ever since Baylor and and gave up Jerome Tain to K-State, like those games have been amazing basketball games, and you just have that added layer there of, the connection between Jerome Tang and Scott Drew. Like, I think that's good for, for the Big 12 and having that storyline. And they've been fun games. And I, I mean, ever since I was young, like K State playing Baylor, most of the time, those games don't really ever disappoint. It's always kind of fun to play Baylor in basketball. So I, I enjoy that. The other one that I would throw out there, though, is TCU. Um, that's another one where, like, that's because of the road trip element. You have a good alumni base in the DFW area. It's, you know, uh, if you want to make a trip out of it, you can. And TCU is always middle of the pack. They've never finished above 500 since joining the Big 12. And I also think maybe more on the football side, but like Jamie Dixon can kind of contribute to this because he's a a pretty big whiner. Uh, I think the TCU K-State nastiness has cranked up a little bit. And I think that uh, that's just another thing where – in college athletics, you can never have enough people that you hate. And I certainly think TCU is climbing up that list in the minds of K-State fans, uh, especially since like the basketball games between the two sides just always seem to be these like ugly dog fights uh, that, that could get nasty. So I, uh, I would throw TCU into the mix, but probably leave them on the fringe because I think you'd rather see K-State and Baylor throughout the, the year multiple times. And again, it's just another one of those marquee win opportunities that K-State could get guaranteed to play on their home floor. So uh, I, I'm basically in lockstep with you on this because there are other teams that I would just look at and say, it doesn't really do anything for me. Um, I can, I'll go ahead and name the teams that would do anything for me. BYU. Uh, BYU, Arizona State, uh, Colorado doesn't even do a yeah, lot for and me. And that's one that you... Uh, you just want to take your chance once with them and say, uh, hopefully we don't have to go to Boulder and they they come to us. So you're not playing at elevation and dealing with the Coors Event Center and everything. UCF doesn't do anything for yeah, me. Yeah, UCF. I, no. I kind of want Cincinnati twice now because I, I'm starting to develop my own personal vendetta <laughs> against Cincinnati and how they're being perceived right now. So I want Casey to I agree them with that. beat them twice. I also thought about Cincinnati too because, I mean – this is not a trip that I encourage people to make constantly, <laughs> but I enjoyed going to Cincinnati. Like I, I liked their arena. I like the setup they had there. Um, so like that's an opponent. And I, I do think it would just, yeah, they, they probably need to be put in their place a little bit. So I did think of Cincinnati, but they weren't towards the top. West Virginia is another one that like Huggins is gone. Now I don't care about West Virginia. West Virginia is not West Virginia basketball anymore to me. So that's fine. Whatever. Um, 
I don't know, Texas Tech, like that's just not one that I I envision Texas as Tech, being like, a fun, you Texas know, Tech, two times would, a year. I'd be okay with Texas Tech, but I'm not like itching at the door, like give us Texas Tech twice or I'm coming after Brett Yormark. Yeah, I mean, in a 20-game conference slate, I don't know that you want to see Texas Tech twice because they're just going to beat the crap out of you. So, you, you know, <laughs> stay away from those guys. But any any others that you would have considered in this new Big 12 to to try and shoehorn in that you wanted to see? Houston probably would have been the the sixth for me. So like we, we were right yeah. in step the whole way. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I think there are some pretty obvious ones and then after that, but I would be interested in knowing how others feel about it. Uh just because I mean, obviously just two yep. opinions here. And yep. I, you know, some people probably have their own personal vendettas, kind of like you, you know. Maybe there is somebody out there that they're like, well, you know. I've developed this real hate for UCF for some reason. So I yeah. br- give them to me twice. Put in the comments who you guys want to see twice. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it ends up working out. We're probably still a long ways away from actually getting that schedule. That typically doesn't come out until um, like late September uh, is typically mm-hmm. the timeline for that. We'll see though. That's, you know, that's when the schedule comes out. It's a little different now when you, you don't know who you're going to be playing within that. So uh, maybe we get some of those released uh, a little bit earlier and we at least know the matchups. But that will do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll get back on the train of talking a little bit of football for you in the midweek. We'll have a recruiting show coming your way as well this week. So lots of things to keep in tune with with K-State Athletics. You can do it over at kstateonline.com and uh, find us at On3 and also right here on the KSO YouTube page. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. We're out of here. Thanks for watching and listening.